Well, thank you for having me. Uh, I want to welcome everyone to the conference this afternoon, this morning. Uh, I've been teaching uh, for over 12 years. It really began uh, in the early 2000s with an outfit called Green Dot Public Schools. They're, they're a major charter outfit in Los Angeles. And, you know, I was taken in by some of the hype as far as student success, accountability, um, being, um, con being interested in uh, college readiness for kids, etc. cetera, uh, because the cause LAUSD and most districts in Southern California have a very bad history of miseducating um, students in general, black students, brown students, working class students. This, the history is not that good. So here comes Green Dot with this promise that our school is going to be better. And they started to build schools. A gentleman named Steve Barr is their, kind of their, um, their guru. So they were able to take over a school, being, being the LUSD allowed them to run a school called Lock High School. And if you know anything about LA's history, Lock High School was built af after the Watts riot, the Watts re rebellion, rather. And it's, it's on the edge of Watts, um, very big campus. Big buildings, track field, um, football, arts and music program, just a grand campus. And the teachers there were taken in by Green Dot. And they agreed for Green for Lock to become charterized. So I mistakenly supported this as a teacher and sought to work there as a teacher. And when I got to the training, I just never forget it. I had noticed that everybody who was working there, or a large number, were not credentialed. I said, wait a minute. How do you be talking about having good teachers and they don't even have a license? And I, I noticed to be a fact. So I was like, well, this, this, well, this isn't going to work out for me because I think you have to have a license. I think that's important. So, you know, I kind of stepped back from Green Dot. Um, but during that, during the experience of Green Dot, we had an issue with our contract. They had a union, um, the AMU, and there was a waiver they wanted us to agree to from the contract because we were working in credit recovery. See, Green Dot would not hire people over 40 to work in the classroom. They would hire people under 40 for the classroom, or if over 40 or 45, you had to work in credit recovery, straight up age, age discrimination. So the union said, no, we, we, we're not going to agree to a waiver. So we had a meeting with Green Dot about this. And what I found disgusting was the company who was giving them the computers to do the uh, credit recovery was in the discussion between labor and management. So what was this guy doing from the company who gave you the computers for a credit recovery? What was he doing there? That wasn't his place. But Green Dot said he could come there. So it just showed me that they were kind of, they had a lot of issues right there with this, the structure of how things should be done. And also people teaching in, in the black and brown community who didn't have a license to teach. And I, I kind of didn't like that. And that did happen. It's true. And it all can be verified if somebody investigates it. So, so, that, so that was one experience. Next experience with an outfit um, called New Dimensions Charter School. And this was an interesting outfit. It was run by Ghanaian immigrants um, that a campus in Watts, a campus in, by USC. Again, this was a test prep school. That school existed to pass tests. And much of the curriculum was basically test material, especially in high school. So... Passing the test was everything, and that was their main focus because, you know, the whole race to the top and focus on accountability and all, all that garbage you hear from charters, from schools, from school leaders, from school districts, from state board of education, state superintendent directors, stuff like that. Okay, so um, that school is all about testing, uh, and but what they always did, I'm, I, I really hate to say it, it was the first time I experienced being discriminated because I was a Black American. They felt that black Americans were inferior. They hired a few and usually fired them very quickly. The uh, guy who ran the school was indicted or was charged with running a basically immigrant smuggling ring. 
he would he would have his his people from Ghana give him money so he could get a job for sponsorship, and that's illegal. He would sponsor people from Ghana to be teachers, and many of them were very good teachers. I'm not knocking their they were very good teachers, but the using his job to make money off their desire to come to the United States and get visas was illegal, and he was he was found guilty of this. Again, this can be documented. So we had a situation where at at um, at uh, New Designs, they basically would harass the black American teachers, and they were of African ancestry themselves, the leaders of, of the school. And at Green Dot, they were having teachers without licensing teaching teaching kids, and you know just just running amok over over labor rights. So I became a little concerned about it, um, but I still hadn't given up the idea of charter school being something good. But it took me some time to see that they're pretty much a business design, in my opinion, to um, fund the directors of the school district, the directors of the local education organizations, the LEA, as they call themselves, to enrich them and to enrich the principals, many of whom go to charter school because they can't become a principal anywhere else. And it's just a joke. Um, um, there's others I, I, I could talk about. I just choose not to. But, but when it comes to labor rights, they will walk over any teacher's rights that exist. I know one person who was hired at school. The salary was too high. So they fired him within six months and lied about so-called evaluation to hire somebody less experience and pay them a little money. Now all, all, all that can be documented. So I find them to be very corrupt or, 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 or organizations and while parents may think they're better because it's a charter or not a charter does not mean it's a good, good school or a bad school. I think that's a myth we have to really address with parents and students. The teachers are no better or no worse. So it is really about the administration and why they exist. And they exist, in my opinion, to make money. That's my opinion why they exist, hands down. And what was the role of the union, UTLA, in protecting charter school teachers? They have special charter school contracts. <sighs> well, um, when, I worked at, when I was working with Green Dot and with uh, New Designs, Green Dot was not covered by, by UTLA. They had their own union. And... Um, and new, new, new design did not have a union. Um, as a matter of fact, one day somebody from the union was was passing out some leaflets to new, to like to to a new design employees coming out of the parking lot, and I just stopped and talked to the guy for a quick second, see what it was what he was doing, and I was interrogated when I got on campus. Who was he? What did you say to him? That kind of stuff. So they really were anti-union, asking all kind of illegal questions. I don't know a lot about UTLA's relationship with, with charter schools. I, I, I don't have any first-hand knowledge of it. Sorry. So then you moved to the Bay Area. Why did you move to the Bay Area to get a job in, in Oakland? Couldn't find a job in L.A. It's just the, the area here is saturated with charter schools. These charter schools make it so hard to get a job. Because what they do, because you have, remember in L.A. you have Cal State L.A., Cal State Long Beach, UCLA, USC, Pepperdine, at least five schools in the geograph geography of LA Metro pumping out teachers every year. Five. Five universities. Not one or two. So the charter schools, okay, we, we can get these, these, these new hires, pay them no money. So it's so hard for anybody to get a job. And people who have jobs try not to get fired the first two years. But charter schools can fire you any time they want. So it's very difficult. I find very difficult if you have experience in teaching and you're over 40 to get a job in Los Angeles or within this area, this region, in my opinion. So I came out. I came to Oakland looking for a job, and boy, was that was that a disappointment. Why don't you talk about what happened at Oakland? Uh, well, Oakland, you know, I'm always I kind of think a sucker for being conned by people, unfortunately. And the principal at the school I was working at said, well, nobody wants to take this job. They can't find housing. Um, we're having this kind of problem, blah, 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 blah. I really hope you can make it. So I said, I'm going to be here for you and be here for those kids. And I found, I found a place to live eventually. Um, the, district, the district lied about the salary. They told me I would get credit when I was being recruited, credit for years I had 
overseas teaching and part year teaching, and they just ignored those lies that were told me by by the recruiter. So they so they they didn't tell the truth as far as salary. Um, when it came to the curriculum for the kids, you know, I hate to say this, but in hindsight, there was no curriculum. I taught mostly newcomer kids, and there was a computer program we used, but because newcomers aren't really tied to the state standards because they're new and certain policies allow them to be exempted from state testing, etc., we were allowed to kind of freestyle the curriculum. And that's okay if you know what, if you have a plan. But I found they didn't have a plan. So I worked the best I could in that year to, to see where the students were and to provide them with a grade level um, educational experience. I was impressed, actually. I'm going to tell you something. The students who had been in this program for three years, newcomers, grade six, seven, eight, when they got to grade nine, they were not as good as the kids who came in from Mexico, Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador. They were not as good. The students coming from overseas were superior in their attitude, in their work ethic, and in their math skills. So I was, I'm was, i hoping that the program does, isn't dumbing down the kids. Because I got good support from the ELL department as far as methods for teaching ELLs, long-term ELLs, and people who have who have interruptions in formal education. I can say that. They're very good in that. But as far as how they run the schools, get rid of teachers, you know, give you so-called evaluation. Oh, this evaluation system Oakland has is just a mess. It's designed to screw you over. It's not designed to help you be a better teacher. Let's find a way to get rid of you. This um, what LTGDS, whatever it's called, it is called. It's just a mess. I don't know what Oakland's doing with it, but it's not helping anybody. So you do. So I got caught caught, caught up in that. And then, you know, I, I resigned my job, blah, 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 and that's it for me in Oakland. I met some good teachers there. I think they really want to give kids, uh, kids a, a good education. But the principles, the bureaucracy, to me, it's all about this. Give me, give me my good salary and shut up. Because if, if a principal's making $128,000 a year, $130,000 a year, and, and, and a teacher's making forty five or fifty, they're, 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 you know, they're in different leagues. And you know, I, I, th- I think Oakland has a lot of a lot of work to do to really create quality education. I doubt they can do it because it's just so corrupt. You know, this guy Antoine Wilson was superintendent, and I knew him from back in the day. And Antoine, you know, was about Antoine. Antoine was not about the kids. And you know, we have a, a new superintendent now. We'll see what she's going to do. But Oakland has some issues with retention. And, re- and recruitment of teachers and making sure kids are getting a, a high quality education. I read somewhere on Glassdoor that they asked teachers questions like, how do you handle a fight in the classroom? Well, that shouldn't be the only question you have in a, in, 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 in a job interview. Because I would think, if you ask me, the teacher, how I handle a fight, I'm thinking, well, kids are fighting all the time. So I'm not going to work there. And you know, are, are senior teachers and African-American teachers being targeted by these school districts? I mean, they say... Oh, yes, but most definitely. Um, senior teachers are, at least in school, and w- which I work, were, you could see them being weeded out. Some would quit. Many are hanging in there. They have experience. They know how to, how to ride the bubble, and they have um, tenure. But they have these... Um, uh, Programs to help to help work on teachers who have issues. Uh, PAR program for uh, recovery, recruitment, retention, and those are always always housed by senior teachers. They get a senior teacher. We saw you teaching. We like what you're doing. We're going to help you. And PAR is used. I know in the Bay Area to get rid of senior teachers, teachers of color. Yes, it's it's. I I, I know of cases in Berkeley in particular. I don't know of a lot in Oakland, but if it's, if it's happening in Berkeley, it's happening around, uh, you know, around the corner. And those teachers, even though they have tenure, um, they tend to stick to themselves, not make too much fuss. 
uh, and try to resign or retire or, you know, or, you know, move on. You know, the, the unions, let's, first of all, be happy you have a union because when I was in charter schools, especially some in L.A., you didn't have one. It got rid of you. So the fact you have one should give you some, like a little bit, you should stand a little bit straighter. Your back should be a little bit, you know, more erect, more, more, more vertical. Uh, it seems like they're in cahoots with management. For example, you have this two-year rule that they can let you go for any reason for two years. Well, first of all, that's just unethical. How is it that people have to go through fingerprinting, fingerprinting, college education, student teaching, background check, blah, 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 to get a job where I can fire you tomorrow because I want to? The union shouldn't even su should support anything like that. That's just ridiculous, firsthand. So the fact they support that means there's something wrong with them, okay? Um, they kind of see teaching as a closed club. We make it for two years, oh, you're okay now, you jo join the club. So that that's you know, that's a sucky environment. If, that, that's, the case, you, if that's the case, and you let people go, the district, then you, get, you, you, should, you should give back my, my dues, which didn't help me, to, help me at all. So I think, from my experience, they're in cahoots with them. I think that... I've had experiences with uh, OEA, uh, the Oakland Education Association, where I don't think the union did enough to help people who were being let go or people who, who were being jacked around by the administration. And I think they basically want to work deals out with management to make themselves look good. Plus, they're in a pretty cushy job. But they did being a, being a, being a, being a, being a president of a union is a pretty cushy job to me. I'm, I'm not knocking people who are union presidents, but you're not working, you're not teaching. You 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 you, you can have meetings up behind closed doors with management and work out deals. No one knows what you're saying and doing. So unless they are controlled by the members. There needs to be more membership control over these union presidents and these unions. Without that, they just serve as a way to collect dues, provide some benefits, um, and really not defend teachers who are most vulnerable. I mean, most vulnerable. I'm sure there are some cases where they help teachers who are, who are experienced and who have been jacked around by the administration, but the most vulnerable really can't be helped. And if you can't help the most vulnerable, why do you exist? So we should fix that. There's a story in the Bay Area right now about Livermore, the charter schools down there, and two were in Stockton, and these guys were just ripping them off. They were, it's in the um, paper in Livermore. I've been following it. So this is a good example of reforming. These, the administration in Livermore was saying, the laws don't exist to allow us to monitor you. The laws exist to allow criminality. This came out the mouth of a charter of a of a school district superintendent. The laws allow charter schools to rip off to not be accountable. So really, that's fake. Nobody wants to have that conversation. It's just they're just mouthing off some steam to take pressure off of them from teachers and from community people who know charter schools rip people off. I don't think it's possible to do that because you give a you give a private entity public money. Why don't you just create a public school? Just make them public school. All you have to do is to, is, to, is to make those schools public schools run by the school district, and you would end the problem of this of these theft of money, but they don't want to do that. It seems like they're content to have a little den of thieves here, there, or some big district, or some little small mom-and-pop operation. It just seems like school districts and the unions seem to be content with that happening because nothing's being done to dismantle them. If you don't dismantle them, they'll continue to, to propagate this myth that they're better, that um, um, labor should be held to tighter constraints and these teachers, that automation, innovation from industry can come straight in without being vetted and examined. You know, they, they pay, they're, they're just a neoliberal model of education that uh, the capitalist class, the rich people in the world, want to stuff down the throats of people, and so, and unfortunately, they're being quite successful at it.